everyone, it's Abby. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's episode of Smut Miss, I'm going to be going over two books from the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver. So I'm going to go over book two and book three. Um, they are Heartless and Powerless. If you go back on my channel, you can see that I had a review for Flawless back, I believe, in January. So if you want to watch that review, it's back in January of 2023. So, um, I technically read Heartless, uh, last month, but I was super sick and still not completely all the way better, but, um, I thought I'd just go ahead and put books two and three as one video. So Heartless, uh, is considered like a lot of people's favorite books, especially from last year. They just really love this book. I can have that experience with it, unfortunately. Um, I gave it three and a half stars that I did round up to four. But I really thought it was going to be a six-star read, and I thought it was really just going to be one of my favorites because so many people had this as a favorite. So I'm kind of the the lone shark in this one, but I mean, four's still good, but I guess when you're expecting a, like a five or a six, four is a little, a little disappointing. So this one has a few fun tropes that people really enjoy. Uh, age gap, which is not my favorite, but the gap wasn't too apparent in this one, so it, it didn't bother me too much. It's an age gap. It's cowboy. It's a single dad romance. It's a nanny romance. And um, there is another trope for it, but it is kind of a surprise. So I don't want to, um, I don't want to talk about that to like go over like spoiler section. So our hero in the story is Cade. He's sort of a gruff, grumpy cowboy. He has um, a lot on his plate. He's sort of running his family's farm since his father is older and, you know, his mother's passed away for many years at this point. And a lot of the burdens of the farm and uh, his siblings and so forth sort of fall on his shoulders. So he definitely feels as if uh, there's a lot of pressure on him. And <coughs> excuse me, he has a five-year-old little boy who is named Luke, I believe. <laughs> and um, very rambunctious. Uh, in the first book, he actually curses a little, so he doesn't curse in this one, but just a very uh, active um, and present child. So, well, Cade, excuse me, Cade needs to find a nanny for him because it's the summer vacation and he is super busy with the farm. So he's trying to find uh, women that he thinks will be suitable for the family. Uh, Rhett, his brother, and his future sister-in-law, Summer, are trying to help him, but no one is good enough for his uh, son. So at one point, uh, Cade goes to the coffee shop in town and bumps into a woman and she like knocks over her purse, out for her undergarments, and he's holding her arm undergarments in this really uh, like rom-com, cute sort of way. And it's this whole thing. She tells them, she tells him to just keep them. He's like, oh my gosh, this woman just gave me her underwear in a public setting. You know, what, the, what in the world? So he's very um, flustered by that. And then he finds out that um, this woman is named Willa and she is one of Summer's friends, sort of Summer's best friend, and she's in the position to be the nanny for him. <laughs> so, um, definitely have, a uh, off to a rocky start and it was really cute. I really enjoyed the beginning of this book. So the whole like meet cute, the whole, um, grumpy cowboy and younger sort of modern day flirty Mary Poppins was really fun. I really enjoyed that aspect of the novel. It just felt like, had a lot of steam and not steam as in spice, but like steam like as in movement through the story. But as the story ran along, I felt like it just sort of slowed down instead of grew or even plateaued and stayed the same. It just kind of dwindled a little bit for me. But overall, it was a good story. It just wasn't hyped up like I wanted it to be in my mind, but really enjoyable. So um, I am going to say a few spoilers. So I'm um, not going to go over Heartless anymore. So I'll you know, so here's a few spoilers and then I'll give like a thumbs up and then I'll switch over to powerless. So some spoilers for this one is the trope of surprise pregnancy. Surprise, surprise. Um, you know, it really shouldn't have been a surprise, surprise because I mean, he, he was filling her up like a gas tank and like proud of it. And there's this whole like, you know, drippy ice cream scene. It's like a turn on thing for them. So it's like, y'all really surprised? You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna dance the jig, you gotta paint fiddler. So <laughs> I don't know. I just like I'm not so surprised by that. But I was a little I wouldn't have chosen that trope for this just because it's a working relationship. It's the nanny. I just kinda wish that hadn't been used. I wish it had a like surprise pregnancy test, but it's a false positive I could get down with. But I just I don't like when people or characters that you enjoy I like I don't want them to feel like they're pressured into something because of a pregnancy. I don't know. I wouldn't want that for my friends or family. I don't want that for my characters either. So um didn't necessarily love the surprise pregnancy. I think a pregnancy scare could have been just as um 
monumental. You know, you don't even have to have pregnancy loss, just like a false positive. It's like, oh, never mind. So yeah, it just wasn't for me. But overall, I did like the story. I just really enjoyed the beginning rather than the middle and the end was just, you know. All right, so I'm gonna do my thumbs up. We're in the clear for no spoilers. <laughs> and I'll go over Heartless. So Heartless is book three in the series. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Powerless. Powerless is book three in the series. Uh, this one was also a four star and I'll go over it. So we have our hero Jasper Gervais. I'm going to go with Gervais. Um, he is actually part of the family of like Rhett and Cade and Violet. He's like adopted in. So his family dies tragically. I think it was a car accident. I can't really remember. And he comes, he's sort of their ward. And, you know, he's like 12 or 14 when this happens. So, you know, a young teenager, uh, tween, uh, middle school, I'd say early high school, possibly. Well, anyway, he, um, you know, he's part, he's becoming part of the family. And every summer, their cousin Sloan comes to visit and stay at the farm. So Sloan is a city girl. She comes from money, I'm assuming. It wasn't really clear. I'm assuming that her father is wealthy. Yeah, so, well, maybe not. So her her mother and Violet's mother were sisters. So that wouldn't mean that they, it would be their farm. So anyway, they could be both from money. And you can, you people that own farms usually are really wealthy. So anyway, but um, she, Sloan comes from a lot of money, very uh, ritzy, glamorous life. I think her parents are like going to Europe for the whole month. They're like, oh, you play with your cousins. You'll have more fun than being, uh, you know, all over Europe, <laughs> whatever. So, it's Canada, Europe, I guess, I don't know. Anyway, um, so she, Sloan is there for the summer. She's like, who's that boy? She's like, oh, well, I mean, he's technically your cousin. I'm like, you know, so <laughs> I did I did read this with my friend Justine, and I did send her some memes from Mean Girls, but he's your cousin, because literally, uh, he's like, in a legal document situation, he's her cousin. So, a little, a little creepy, but... Um, Overall, it was a pretty good story. So Sloan is at currently engaged to like this jerky, douchey, like hockey star. And Jasper hates him. Jasper is also a hockey heartthrob, which I didn't actually catch when I read the book. I don't know what was happening. But um, uh, they, you know, it starts off family <laughs> to friends to lovers. <laughs> you know, technically they're family. You know, I'm just put that out there. They're technically family. So family, friends to lovers. Um, sort of thing. It has a road trip, which, you know, those are fine too. It just had some really corny lines for me. And my friend Justine pointed out like, this is fiction. It is not real. But I was like, you know, books real. This is considered realistic fiction. Fiction that tells stories of people's lives. That's not fantasy. Like a romance novel is realistic fiction, meaning it lives in realism. <laughs> and Sloan's father is like, you need to get back and stop gallivanting with this this like trash blah blah I'm like well, who would really say that to their their daughter like I hate the like archetype of the rich father or rich mother who's like uh and the girl's like on the back of a motorcycle or whatever or the guy's in love with the daughter of the maid or something like that and this is big deal for classism and it's like a contemporary and do people really think like that I'm sure there are people that think like that like oh why would you want to you know hang out with someone below your quote-unquote station but to me it's just sort of like big eye roll energy in 2023 to have stuff like that in a book I guess it's like it's I in a way it's kind of going back to those like older tropes of like young adults or teenage angsty storylines so I'm thinking um like endless love sort of had that trope with the I think the girl like the Brooke Shields is a wealthy girl and the boy isn't or something and there's you know other ones where like the girl is like Harvard bound and the other guy is also like Harvard bound, but he like works in the pizza restaurant or whatever. So I know that like plays on people's heartstrings, like in movies and stuff, they have that. But I don't know. I just don't love, you know, it, it relies in realism. And that just is like eye roll to me. <laughs> but overall, it was a good story. Um, surprise, surprise. The heroine was a ballet dancer. I wasn't shocked at all by that. Um <laughs> but it's just sort of a little bit corny. She's very stereotypical uh, wasp. I'm trying to think, is it, can you be a Canadian wasp? I guess so. She's a Canadian wasp. Is she, she might not even be Canadian. She could be American. She's visiting, so she could be from the Americas. <laughs> but Sloan, I mean, Sloan is such like a waspy name. Like think of the daughter from Beethoven. Her, her name was Rice. 
R-Y-C-E, rice, you know, <laughs> very waspy. So, um, yeah, just a little bit relying on that whole classism. Um, also, like, I think if you really love that, though, like, you love, like, the forbidden because it's, like, a class difference, but it's also modern. So, like I said, in this lab, I think they also do that in the last song, which is the Miley Cyrus, Liam Hemsworth movie, but also the Nicholas Sparks um, book. They have that. Um, so, yeah, I think I've rambled on too much, but when I have a lot to say, I have a lot to say, I guess. But overall, both were four stars, so nothing tragic, you know. The uh, Flawless, I really, really like that one. I think that was a six-star read. So um, I will have that in an upcoming video for Smut Miss on my favorite books of the year. But um, so far, Flawless was my favorite, which is completely different to what others have, won, uh, others have felt. They've loved um, two and three, uh, and one was a good jumping-off point, whereas one is like my tier, and two and three are like, mm, you know. <laughs> Um, will I continue with the series? It's a six book series. Yeah, I probably will. Um, I'm not, I haven't been wronged by the series. They are enjoyable. They don't really, you don't have to be like a cowboy enthusiast to really enjoy the stories. You don't have to be, um, an expert on Canadian lifestyles, you know, but they're just fun. I don't find them to really rely on like a cowboy trope or Western they're more just contemporary romances and the setting is involving a family like on a farm. So I wouldn't say this is like a uh, Yellowstone. I want to, I've never seen this show, but my aunt watches it. I think it's on like up TV. It's called Heartland. I think it's a Canadian like family that um, like has horses and stuff. So to me, this is one of those storylines where it's surprisingly spicy. The entire series, the spice is almost a little, uh, jarring because it is so uh, heavy to what like the the overall plot in like themes and I hate, don't really love the phrase but vibes <laughs> of the story gives the spice is a little like oh they they're going there they're doing that okay <laughs> you know which is fine I it just it's a little unexpected you know sometimes lately I found that books are so spicy to the point where they don't necessarily really match the aesthetic of their overall book but you know what I'd rather have it spicy than uh wanting more when the characters want more <laughs> well everyone have a wonderful day don't forget to like subscribe share and comment I will see y'all soon for another video bye everyone